a series of videos on the fundamentals of pharmacokinetics. You will find these videos useful by themselves, but they are nevertheless best viewed alongside a textbook, Clinical Pharmacokinetics from the Beginning. It's available on Amazon and priced for a student budget. The textbook and these videos are themed around an imaginary drug called Pretendolone. Drug concentration time data are used to build a pharmacokinetic profile. If you want more information on how this works, see video one and introduction. Video four, area under the curve or the AUC. A quick recap from the previous videos, 3A and 3B. Here we have the oral drug concentration time plot for Pretendolone. It is for a 50 milligram single oral dose. We calculated the elimination rate constant and the half-life. Now in this video, we're gonna look at a different pharmacokinetic parameter known as the area under the curve, represented by this red area here. Now, before we consider what the area under the curve is, let's just consider the units. The area is transcribed between the X and Y axes. And so the units for the area are the product of the X and Y axes. The units on the Y axis are concentration, nanograms per mil in our case. The units on the x-axis are time or hours in our case. And so the units for area under the curve are nanograms per mil times hours. They look rather odd and they sometimes uh, cause a little confusion. But you can see here where they come from. You may see all sorts of variations on this. For example, hours times milligrams per litre, but they all come out to mean the same thing. So, what does the AUC mean? It represents exposure to the drug. Let's have a look at two concentration time plots. The red one, where you have some Cmax and some Half-Life, and a blue plot where you have a different Cmax and a different half-life. So the shape of these plots is very different, but the AUC could be exactly the same. In the case of the red plot, the drug attains a lower Cmax, but is present for a longer period of time. And for the blue plot, the Cmax is higher, but it is present for a shorter period of time. And so the exposure for the red and the blue plot could be exactly the same. The concept of exposure is discussed in greater detail in the textbook Clinical Pharmacokinetics from the beginning. So how is the area under the curve calculated? The first thing you have to decide is over what time period the area under the curve is to be calculated. You can choose any time period to calculate the AUC, but the two most common are AUC from time zero to some defined time T, and we call that AUC naught to T, and the AUC from time zero to time infinity, and we call that AUC naught to infinity. Let's just have a look at these in a little more detail. Time T is usually the last time point where the drug concentration was measured. Doesn't have to be, but it is commonly the case. If we look at the oral data for Pretendolone, then the last time point measured was at 36 hours. So T in this case is 36 hours. And it's best practice to define T. And in the case of Pretendolone, we can say that's AUC naught to 36 hours. It is a more precise 
definition. Going back to our concept of exposure, if we calculate the AUC between 0 and 36 hours, we are calculating the exposure of the drug over that time period. Now let's look at AUC 0 to infinity. The elimination phase is exponential. And so in theory, it will take infinite time for all of the drug to be eliminated. So that's where we get AUC naught to infinity from. AUC naught to infinity represents the total exposure to the drug. Let's calculate AUC naught to T. So that's naught to 36 hours. In the case of pretendolone, we are going to use the oral data as an example. Of course, you can do this with the intravenous data as well. We'll leave that to another time. The way we do this is that we take each of these data points, each of these time points where we took a blood sample and measured the drug concentration. So each of those, and we drop the lines down from the concentrations down to the x-axis for time. Now when we do this, we form a series of shapes. And let's just take one as an example here, shown here by the red block. That shape is a trapezoid. Let's just pop it up there for clarity. The trapezoid is defined by a series of coordinates. A and B are the drug concentrations. C and D are time. We can calculate the area of a trapezoid using a standard equation, where A plus B divided by 2 multiplied by D minus C. The standard equation for calculating the area of a normal trapezoid. Now we can calculate the area of all of the trapezoids across the drug concentration time curve. And then if we add up all the areas of those trapezoids, we would have calculated the area under the curve between 0 and 36 hours. Probably the easiest way of calculating an area under the curve is to use a table like the one shown here on the right. On the left, we have the data for a single oral dose of 50 milligrams of pretendolone. They represent plasma drug concentration in nanograms per mil for each of the time points. Note that the early time points have been converted from minutes to decimal hours, and you need to do that in order to calculate the area of the trapezoids. We will use the table on the right to calculate the area of each of the trapezoids. And there's a diagram of a trapezoid above for clarity, showing the coordinates A and B, which are drug concentrations, and C and D, which are times. The first trapezoid, coordinates A and C, represent zero drug concentration at zero time. Coordinates B and D are taken from the first time point from our pretendolone data. For the next trapezoid, the coordinates B and D now become coordinates A and C. And then the coordinates B and D are for the next time point in our pretendolone data. And so on down the table, we can fill in the various values. Now I'm just going to simply fill in the table with all of the values and use those to calculate the area of each of the individual trapezoids using our standard trapezoidal equation. 
we can then add up all those areas to give us the AUC between 0 and 36 hours. And if we do that, we come to the value of 824.33 nanograms per mil times hours. So the AUC between 0 and 36 hours for a 50 milligram oral dose of pretendolone appears to be 824.33 nanograms per mil times hours. But there is an approximation in this calculation that is not entirely justified. The assumption in our current model concerns the coordinates A, B. We're assuming that that part of the trapezoid is linear because we are using a formula to calculate the area of a normal tra trapezoid, which is shown here. In actual fact, if we plotted that on a linear plot, you can see that A and B are actually connected by a curve because elimination is exponential. In fact, this would overestimate the area of the trapezoid by that section there shown in blue. So we need to modify the equation. And we do this by adding natural logarithmic terms into the equation for the AB coordinates. So we now have two equations for calculating the trapezoids in our pharmacokinetic plot. One is known as the linear trapezoidal rule and the other is known as the log trapezoidal rule. So which one do you use to calculate the area under the curve? The answer is both of them. The absorption phase is likely to be linear or zero order, whilst the elimination phase is going to be exponential. So we use the linear trapezoidal rule during the absorption phase and the log trapezoidal rule during the exponential elimination phase. This is known as the log linear or perhaps more descriptively, the linear up log down rule. If we go back to the table where the area of the trapezoids was calculated, what I've now done is in those red figures, I've used the linear up rule. And in those blue figures, I've used the log down rule. The sum of the areas of the trapezoids is now 790.84 nanograms per mil times hours. And that is the AUC 0 to 36 hours for pretendolone. Now just note that using just the linear trapezoidal rule for a 50 milligram oral dose, we attained an area under the curve of 824.33 nanograms per mil times hours. But using the log linear trapezoidal rule, the AUC was 790 nanograms per mil times hours. So using the linear rule during the elimination phase overestimates the AUC by about 4%, which doesn't sound a lot, but with other drugs, this error may actually be far more significant. To calculate the area under the curve for the intravenous dose is essentially the same as what we did for the oral dose. I have not shown the detailed calculations here, but they are shown in the textbook if you're interested. The outcome is that the area under the curve between 0 and 36 hours for a 2 milligram single intravenous dose of pretendolone is 90 nanograms per mil times hours. That's great, that covers the AUC 0 to T, but 
What about AUC naught to infinity? What you are doing here is you're extrapolating the elimination phase to infinite time. Why infinite time? Because you want to take it down to when the drug concentration is zero. And since the y-axis is on a logarithmic scale, you can't put zero on that axis. Zero will equate to infinite time. Mathematicians do not like infinities. But fortunately, there is a fairly easy fix here. The AUC naught to infinity is equal to the AUC naught to T plus CT divided by K. CT is the con drug concentration at the last time point measured. And in our case, that was 1.31 nanograms per mil. And K, of course, is the elimination rate constant, which from video 3A we know is 0 0.122 per hour. If we pop those into the equation, then we find that the area under the curve from zero to infinity for the oral dose of pretendolone is 800 nanograms per mil times hours. As before, I've not done the detailed calculation for the intravenous dose, but instead I've summarized here all the area under the curve. So you've got AUC from 0 to 36 for the oral dose and the intravenous dose, and AUC naught to infinity for the oral dose and the intravenous dose. Some final words on area under the curve. Calculating the area under the curve from zero to infinity involves an extrapolation, and it's best to keep that extrapolation to a minimum which means that the difference between the AUC naught to T and AUC naught to infinity should not really exceed about 20%. That's just a, a rule of thumb. Now, the, for pretend alone, the difference is under 2%. So we are well within those parameters. The AUC is dose dependent. And so it's not usually quoted as a pharmacokinetic parameter in its own right. It is used in the calculation of a number of other pharmacokinetic parameters. When those parameters are calculated, it is usually assumed that you are using AUC naught to infinity rather than the value for AUC naught to T. In the next video, that's video five, the AUC is applied to the calculation of absolute oral bioavailability. Hope to see you there.